Welcome to the Good Free Photos channel, and today we're going to be talking about astrophotography in the lovely state of Wisconsin. Why Wisconsin? Well, I live in Wisconsin, so I have vast experience shooting all different types of photography in Wisconsin, uh, and especially astrophotography, since that is one of my favorites. One note about astrophotography, if you are afraid of the dark, afraid of bears, wolves, um, swamp monsters, or zombies should probably find another niche in photography to pursue because you will be in the middle of the forest very often deep at night where there's no lights because those are the best places for astrophotography and you will be in wildlife or wilderness areas so there might be some uh, interesting wildlife and of course zombies and uh, swamp man will come after you so you can't be afraid of them you have to know how to fight them uh, actually no you don't really have to be afraid of zombies and swamp man because they're, they're not real but uh, the other stuff, you just really can't be afraid of the dark because you will be in the dark a lot at night. And uh, I definitely recommend you bring a flashlight or at least your iPhone light, both for light painting and so you know where, how, how to get around because it is pitch black in a lot of these places. Like not the city black where you can kind of see in front of you, but like pitch black. Or if you stick out your hand in front of you, it's hard to see. Also, my favorite lens to shoot, I do shoot full frame with a D750, so my favorite lens to shoot uh, the night sky is the um, 14 millimeter Rokinon lens. It's f of 2.8 but with full frame I can shoot up to 3200 without too much uh, noise uh, noise in my photos so and the uh, photos are very very sharp using the 14 millimeter. Do not use your kit lens to shoot it will be blurry and the uh, f-stop at 4 or above will just not do you well for astrophotography. Um, if you shoot with an APS-C or cut frame camera, like I call it, um, you might want to look at the Rokinon 24 f of 1.4, which will allow you to shoot at a faster f-stop. But what I've found with that camera is if you dial it down past f of 5.6 or so, the images are uh, much softer. They're not nearly as sharp. Uh, I know this because I've done both um, Star Trails, which I, I do shoot at like f of 7 or f of 8 because of the 30 minute hour exposures and uh, just regular astrophotography f of like 2 and noticeably the f of 5.6 photos are actually pretty sharp but the f of 2 photos are soft so definitely if you want to do astrophotography and you want uh, sharper images and, if, and you have a full frame camera I would definitely recommend the 14 millimeter f of 2.8 I would recommend it anyways because you, you get a much bigger span of the sky but um, with that being said let's go to another useful tool for astrophotography darkskyfinder.com slash maps this map is a light pollution map and it will show you where light pollution is severe and where it is not and where it, the best place to shoot the stars are uh, at night so as you can see in this chart, black and dark gray means good area, no light pollution, whereas white and light gray means bad area or lots of light pollution. And you know, it makes sense in the major cities, Chicago, Milwaukee, New York, uh, Philly, Washington, those are the worst areas to shoot. Those are the areas where you really can't see any stars at all. So um, they're white and light gray, whereas you know, a lot of the lands of Canada up here uh, outside of maybe like Toronto are excellent places to shoot astrophotography because no one lives in the lands of Canada outside of a few cities so that is really um, this map and as you notice like the eastern United States is just completely light polluted whereas the western United States isn't there's a lot of expanse of land to shoot but Wisconsin as you can see it's okay um, at least in the north there's plenty of blue and black areas but where we live in the south it's mainly uh, yellow and red with some green spotted and so it's not a if you live in the south it's definitely not a great place but there are good spots where it's light blue and I'll talk about those spots a lot of the light blue spots will be state natural areas which means there's very little designated parking and you will be in like tall grass or like a marsh or something and it's hard to find a place to set up and I will tell you uh, the places that I've been able to set up and which are really good for astrophotography and I'll give you tips on where to park and where to set up and how to get there and stuff and uh, yeah and I'll show you pictures and examples of what I've taken towards there now note that some of these places a lot of these places um, 
I actually went to to try to take astrophotography before I got my D750. I was shooting with an old T2i with a kit lens, so some of these photos are just not going to be that good. And you will also see the difference between the um, photos I take with the 24mm and the 14mm. The 14mm is the lens I bought last, so the images I have with that are the best ones, but they're only from like um, pretty much this April onward, which is when I acquired that lens, and I love that lens. It's a great lens, and it's taken my astrophotography up another lot, notch. So with that, let's start discussing the areas uh, starting in the south in Wisconsin where uh, you can shoot the best astrophotography. And we'll start with Governor Dodge State Park. This is taken with my 14 millimeter at Governor Dodge State Park. You can see it is pretty sharp. Uh, at night there you can see some movement in the trees that's because like it's like a 30 minute exposure and trees don't stay still for 30 minutes sad I know um, this is a star trail the North Star is up there because obviously all the stars circle around the North Star in star trails um, I don't actually have a galaxy shot from this night because it, it was a full moon as you can see um, the moon is like over there somewhere and it uh, broadcasts a lot of light so this was actually not uh, at a low f-stop. But Governor Dodge State Park, you want to be at the area not near Cox Hollow Lake, but definitely near Twin Valley Lake. It is a green area, so you will be able to see the stars in the galaxy decently clearly. Not great, but this is right next to Dodgeville. It's an hour from Madison, so for the distance you have to travel, it um, doesn't really get much better than this. It is a nice place. You will probably have to get a camping permit for one night to really stay out there the night. It is a state park uh, to shoot astrophotography because at this place I noticed that they actually do check um, to see if you actually have the permit. So I definitely recommend you uh, get a camping permit for this. I have been asked to leave uh, last time I went because I didn't have the camping permit and I stayed past 10. So in the summer you definitely want to get a camping permit, but it is a pretty good place at Twin Valley Lake. Uh, there's a parking lot there to shoot the uh, sky, night sky. So that is the first place in southern Wisconsin. Uh, the second place is actually Wallalusing State Park, and this is one of those uh, areas I went to before I got my full frame camera. This is a shot with a Canon T2i and the kit lens. So I wasn't able to turn the ISO all the way up, and at that point I was still a little bit afraid of the dark, so I didn't want to stay like Full, like um, when the sun like got completely pitch black and down and that's Prairie du Chen in the distance so w I'm guessing I'll come back here with a uh, my my current setup and this will be a lot better but you can actually see a decent amount of stars in the sky at Prairie du Chen especially if you look in this direction away from the town but you can actually get a decent shot of the stars above the town of Prairie du Chen so and this is the overlook area where there is a parking lot you have to walk maybe couple hundred yards to the overlook but this is definitely where I would shoot for astrophotography um, and you can get a nice shot of the stars above the city uh, once the sun fully goes down at Wadalusing State Park and also it's, it's actually a, just a really great place to shoot photography because you do overlook the Wisconsin River flowing into the Mississippi and you can actually if you light paint you can get that landscape beneath the stars and it is pretty beautiful it is a light green area which means it's decent you can see the galaxy from here although sometimes it might be in the opposite direction uh, as this overlook so you might have to shoot opposite direction like above the trees to get the galaxy but this is a good place for astrophotography and it is just a lovely place for landscape in general it is also a state park I've never been asked to leave after dark at this place because I don't think they check as much at this place, but if you want to camp here, that's great too. So this is Wailalusing State Park. The third place is Wildcat Mountain State Park, and this is shot with my T2i and kit lens. Uh, you can see this is not like sharp at all, it's really blurry. Um, so Wildcat Mountain is a little bit better than, than Wailalusing. At the end of the park there is a balcony overlook, it does not overlook a city, it, is, it actually overlooks into the hills and on a new moon on a clear night you can see the galaxy above uh, this is actually the galaxy but as I said um, I shot this with a T2i and a kit lens so it's and the kit lens is awful in the dark it doesn't focus at all even if I manually focus it still sucks as you can see here so this is not a good shot but this is about the amount of stars you can see and with the Nikon D750 you can probably see more stars and, it, and definitely with my current lens it'd be much sharper and a much better image so you can definitely see the galaxy from here uh, if you come at the right time at night. 
And it's generally not a bad view. It's not like the best view in the world, but it's definitely not a bad view. Um, so I definitely recommend this. It is about probably an hour and a half, hour 40 minutes from Madison, but it also gives a lot of great scenic views during the day and you can just stay at night and shoot the stars as well. Um, parking is not a problem, it's a state park. I haven't been asked to leave, um, but you can get a camp, uh, camping pass here if you want to be perfectly safe. You will have to have a parks pass here as in all Wisconsin natural and state parks. So that is the third place, Wildcat Mountain. It is also in the south. Moving further along the south, the next area is the Kakapu Valley Nature Area. And um, this is actually shot during the day. It's actually a great landscape in the day. It's also, like the others, it's a green area. So you can see the uh, Milky Way on a clear night. And um, with, an, with no moon, of course. And this place actually has a lot of hills and trees nearby. And there's this place, more than any of the others, has a really good place to set up. I would actually set up at the visitor center here. Um, driving here at night might be a little tricky because uh, the road is not, you know, the most visible at night. It is pretty dark here at night. But generally, I can definitely see, like, you setting up here and then, like, um, looking back at the stars. And I think this would be actually a really good place to light paint and get a wonderful foreground and background shot of the galaxy and the stars. This is... This is, I actually haven't come here at night with the camera, but I have driven around here at night and there are definitely quite a few stars in the sky. Once again, it is one of the better places in southern Wisconsin. It's about an hour and a half, an hour 45 minutes from Madison. There are some really small roads you do have to drive uh, to get here and I would just park pretty much at the visitor center. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to be there at night, but really like no one's there, you're not going to be bothering anyone, it's complete wilderness. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, like all the other places, kind of like go at your own risk. And I would actually stay near the uh, visitor center area just so you don't get lost at night. But even at that area, there's beautiful landscapes nearby. And I would definitely recommend this place uh, if you want to do astrophotography. The Kika this is the Kickapoo Valley Natural Area, or kind of like, you know, state wildlife natural area. And it's one with the visitor center as you can see over here, and trails and stuff, so it's cool to visit during the day, but I think this would be a good place to shoot at night for astrophotography. Uh, next up is one of the two best spots in southern Wisconsin. This is actually shot with my Nikon D750 and uh, the 14mm. As you can see, it is very, very sharp. I mean, there's a little bit of wavy crap like in the grass, but that's because this is like a 20 second exposure, and if there's any slight bit of wind, it, the grass does start waving around, so it's not going to be perfectly sharp. Any like long exposure photography, um, it's not going to be perfectly sharp because any type of uh, grass movement or wind movement will affect it. But as you can see, it is actually a, a fairly sharp image. Actually, it's a very sharp image. This is obviously for me. It's I use my flashlight to light paint this uh, with the iPhone in the foreground, so it has foreground and background. My iPhone doesn't have a concentrated beam, so I can't light paint the hills back there. But as you can see, you can clearly see the galaxy here, much better than the other places. There's dozens of stars in the night sky, and it's just an overall awesome image. Um, there is only really one designated parking spot in Hogback Prairie, and this is where I took this from. Uh, ideally, I would want to be up in the ridge at night, but there's no parking place uh, up on the ridge or near the ridge at night. And I think you have to walk like a mile from the parking space to the trail that leads to the ridge. And the ridge, ridge is pretty steep and there's not a defined uh, hiking path up there. So I wouldn't recommend that at night, but you can try it. Uh, I definitely, there are, there is wildlife here. Um, you know, there's, I've seen raccoons, foxes and stuff. There's a lot of stuff here. There's probably like, like a wolf or two here too. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't seen them, but I've heard some howls at night, so I'm guessing there's probably one or two. But there is a one park. There is a parking area. If you come in from the direction of the nearest town, which is I think where most people come in, unless you're coming in from Minnesota side, um, you want to travel in a little bit. And um, before you get to like kind of like a wooded corridor, we have to drive through. There is a turn, and there is a small parking area that says uh, Hogback Prairie. You want to park there. It's very very easy to miss at night. So drive slowly and keep your eyes peeled. It's it, it's on the opposite side of the road as the farmhouse, which is really nearby. So that is the only designated parking area. You can also drive on Cintron Valley Road, um, and you can just pull over in one of the grassy kind of 
you know, off-road areas. I don't think that's as good, and uh, this place, I, I like it better than the Centron Valley area for shooting ash photography. The best place is up on the ridge over here, but like I said, at night and even during the day, it's pretty hard to get up on the ridge, so I wouldn't recommend it at night, but if you have a bunch of buddies with flashlights, you could give it a shot, but you have to walk quite, a, there's no parking next to the pathway that leads to the ridge, and you have to walk like quite a long ways to get to that area, so I definitely wouldn't recommend it at night, and as you can see, this is a pretty good shot. If you tilt the camera a little more up, you can definitely get more to the span of the Milky Way and the sky, but I wanted to get foreground and some of the hills back there, so this is the shot, and I'm really happy with this shot. So the Hogback Prairie State Natural Area, there's only one parking spot, as I explained. Uh, look carefully for it. Um, if you're coming in from the other side, like from Minnesota side, you have to drive all the way through Cintron Valley Road. Uh, curve out. Take, I think it's a left. Not exactly sure. I think it is. No, maybe it's a right. Anyways, and then you just take a right out towards the nearest town, and then you just go through the wooded corridor, and right after the wooded corridor, there's a farmhouse on one side, and then just right after, on the other side of the road, there is a small parking area for about two or three cars. There's never anyone there so you're going to have you're going to have the place all to yourself so uh, hogback prairie highly recommended if you're in southern wisconsin the nearest larger town is gay mills and it's about an hour 40 from madison the next area also which is just as good as uh hogback prairie is actually meadow valley state natural area it's a little further this is more of the central wisconsin area and it is uh east of Black uh, River State Forest. This is also light painted. It's, it's also with the Nikon D750 and the 14 um, millimeter lens, as it is pretty sharp, as you can see. Uh, once again, I did have my flashlight, but the trees in the background are actually kind of hard to paint. Um, you need a really concentrated beam to do that. Um, if you're light painting, by the way, I, I um, definitely highly recommend a flashlight that's at least 100 lumens. Otherwise, it's just not strong enough generally to get a good even paint. And uh, as you can see, the galaxy is coming up from up here. Meadow Valley is completely uh, a wilderness area. There's several access points into Meadow Valley. You can drive um, on the uh, county road, county highway, and um, just before, if you were coming in from the area um, opposite of Wisconsin Rapids, I forgot what that town's called, but opposite of Wisconsin Rapids, th there is a little road... Um, that leads to kind of like the swampy area. It is an ATV route, but I've driven it with my Kia Optima and it's just fine. Uh, in the dark you have to watch out a little bit, but it goes right into the swampy area. There is like a little bit like a, a turnout place where you can park and um, park your car and set up. That's actually not where I took this photo though. Um, the area I took it is more of a Barrens area. It is still kind of swampy. So how you get there is, uh, I think it's on uh, Highway uh, State Highway 173. Um, if you're coming in from, I, I guess, kind of like that, there, there's like a highway that junctions um, basically at, at uh, Dexter. And then if you just turn, I think, right at Dexter, you'll hit Highway 173 in a couple miles and a little, another town. If you go there, this, is, this area is about maybe six or seven miles um, before you reach Mar. And, uh, and then there's like a, on the right side of the road, I think there is a little uh, a little um, pullout area. It's a circle drive. And then you go past the circle drive, go in about maybe a quarter of a mile, half a mile, and you'll hit this area where there's some trees, but generally just some grass where you can set up your tripod. And if you look over the trees, I think on the left, you'll see the Milky Way come out. So this is... Um, Meadow Valley State Natural Area. This is not a designated parking spot. This is an ATV route. I just parked to the side at night. There's no one there at night, so no one's going to come yell at you generally. And this is definitely uh, one of the best places in southern or central Wisconsin to shoot the Milky Way. That entire natural area is, is great. Um, there's also a place where a lot of people recommend called the Barrens. I think you just go past Mauer on County H, about maybe a mile, quarter, uh, three quarters of a mile, and there's a place where you pull out and walk into the barren site. So this is definitely, um, Meadow Valley is pretty large and there's several areas in Meadow, Meadow Valley that are kind of hard to access at times, but definitely go here to shoot um, astrophotography. As you can see, this photo is 
pretty good, pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with it. So this is Metal Valley. So those are the places in southern Wisconsin that I recommend for astrophotography. Now let's move up more to the north, and we're going to go by the Lake Michigan Lakeshore because I'm sure a lot of people want to shoot astrophotography there. Um, the first uh, park I would recommend is Point Beach. Now last time I went to Point Beach, I did get there at, do uh, at dawn, but I have been there at night before, just not with my camera. There is a lighthouse there, which makes for a really, really interesting backdrop. Um, this is actually Sunrise. Uh, over Lake Michigan and it's, it's a great place for sunrise. You can see there's a, a bunch of like birds and stuff and you can get clear color with the sun and everything so it's pretty good um, place to get a sunrise photo but it's also an excellent place to shoot uh, kind of like at, towards the lake to get a shot of the Milky Way. It's Point Beach. I believe it's about two hours north on the lakeshore from Milwaukee. Uh, there are parks closer by like um, Harrington Beach and Kohler Andre uh, those places are pretty light polluted, so I wouldn't recommend them, but Point Beach is a green area again. It's kind of further out there, and I would definitely recommend it for both sunrise, uh, uh, sunrise lake shots, and astrophotography. Um, I would try to shoot, like get the lighthouse in the foreground. You can't get too close to the lighthouse because um, you can, people can't actually rent the lighthouse, but you can, with a wide-angle camera, you can definitely just kind of like set up close to the lighthouse and just get the stars above it and it's pretty good so Point Beach State Park it's also a great place for recreation by the way um, now we get really farther up north and, th and the next place is Newport State Park this is at the tip of the Door Peninsula right before you get to the ferry stop of Washington Island this is pretty much the only dark blue spot all along the um, shore of Lake Michigan on the Wisconsin side until you get to the uh, uh, the islands. And of course, the island, you have to pay to get a ferry, so Newport is uh, much easier and more accessible. As you can see, it's it is pretty good here at Newport. This is a shot with my 24 millimeter on my Nikon D750, so it's not quite as sharp, although this is one of the sharper images I've shot with it, because everything's like um, pretty far in the distance, and you can get a decent um, clarity of the galaxy. It's really clear. I did Photoshop this, so there's a bunch of different colors here, and the galaxy looks pretty glorious here, so and it's also a good place to camp, and uh, you know, kind of play around in Lake Michigan, I suppose. I didn't have my anything for light painting like I wanted to, but um, I would have if I did. This is um, kind of a wide-angle shot, and the galaxy shows up very, very clear here. And it, in the summer, it actually shows up pretty much over the lake, so you can get the lake and the galaxy, as you can see here. And this is just a good place to shoot astrophotography. It's also a great part just to visit and shoot during the day as well. So that's Newport State Park. And you can just pull in at the end uh, at the parking lot. As a state park, you will need a state park sticker. So next, um, that's Point Beach, sorry. Next, after, this is also Newport State Park, and you can see that's the North Star, and this is in the parking lot. I just shot um, astrophotography, and uh, I did a time-lapse star trail. And like I said, um, the 24 millimeter is actually a lot sharper if you put the stops down. I think this is like, I don't exactly know what f-stop this was unless I check. I think this is like f of 7 or 8. So once you stop it down to 7 or 8, the lens becomes extremely sharp. I also happen to know this um, generally because I, I've used this lens to shoot landscapes during the day and it is very, very sharp. So once you drop the f-stop down to below like 5 points, uh, above 5.6, uh, it becomes much, much sharper. As you can see, this is a pretty sharp um, image. If I light painted the trees, you can tell the car is pretty sharp too. If I light painted the trees, the tree they would be pretty sharp, and you can tell just the stars and the spin is a lot sharper than um, the lower uh, f-stop images with this lens. The next spot is Washington Island, and uh, Washington Island is actually really big. I have been there at night. There's a ton of stars in the sky. Uh, this is, I think, one of the uh, school beaches, but. This is not where I would recommend you shoot uh, astrophotography. Where I would recommend you shoot astrophotography is actually a, a kind of like the boat port to Rock Island. So there's this place called Jackson Port on the farther side of the island facing Rock Island, and it is completely pitch black there. It might be one of, probably, it might be one of the two best places in the state to sh actually shoot astrophotography because you get a view of the lake, you will get a nice, nice clear view of the galaxy and the stars. And, uh, and it's just a really, really good backdrop, especially if you like stars over the lake, which 
I really like if I can get uh, if I can get it. And it's completely dark. There's no light pollution. If you bring a flashlight, it makes for really good light painting. And uh, if you just shoot at Jackson Port on Washington Island, it is definitely one of the best places in the state. So Washington Island, and it's a great summer getaway too. I've been to Washington Island, and uh, there's a lot of beaches and stuff to do there. It's just a great getaway spot uh, for your weekend. Book early though, because Washington Island hotels fill up really, really fast in the summer. Speaking of that area, um, an even better place than Washington Island is Rock Island. This is actually the Rock Island Boathouse, and this makes for a really, really interesting foreground fixture if you're shooting astrophotography. Rock Island, they don't even allow motorized vehicles on there, so you will have to hike around. But there is a ferry that goes to Rock Island, and it's camping only. So you can only camp there. But if you get a campsite there in the summer, it's, it's glorious at night, at least on a clear day. You can see, like, pretty much everything you want to see in the sky. It is probably, would be my favorite place to shoot astrophotography. Unfortunately, last time I came here, I didn't really have my equipment and uh, not my tripod and everything. So I was just able to shoot, you know, the boathouse and some scenic um, areas around Rock Island State Park. But it is one of the best places in the state to shoot astrophotography. It's in the middle of Lake Michigan. There is a lighthouse there if you want to try to shoot the lighthouse uh, in the foreground. But this boathouse makes for a pretty interesting foreground shot and there's campgrounds um, on the island and uh, you can't get off the island after 4 so don't try to change your mind and not want to camp there after 4 p.m. because the ferry doesn't come back across. You could try to swim across uh, Lake Michigan to get to Washington Island. I don't recommend it. Lake Michigan is pretty deep and it's pretty rough and if you try you probably will die. So don't do it. So Rock Island State Park, definitely uh, a great place to shoot astrophotography. And uh, moving on, um, let's move west. This is Big Bay State Park. This is on Madeline Island, and this is Apostle Island's National Lakeshore, which includes a lot of the islands. Madeline, uh, Madeline Island is the biggest one. And as with Washington Island, you don't want to shoot... Um, astrophotography on the side that's on the side that's facing the mainland you want to shoot on the side that's facing the outer islands and Big Bay State Park is just where that is you can camp here you can also kind of like just kind of drive there after dark I guess and set up on the side of the island that's facing um, uh, the outer islands any of the outer islands are great too but you do have to take a water taxi there and you're kind of stuck there for a couple of days if you go there because it's kind of like a wilderness adventure thing where they just drop you off on an island for like two or three days and then you kind of have to survive until they come and pick you back up. It's great for wilderness adventures, but if you just want to do nightly photography there, it's probably not your best bet. But uh, Big Bay State Park and the outer part of Madeline Island is also um, extremely dark and on a clear day with no moon, you can see clearly the galaxy. You can see it over like either the lake or the swamp or a variety of other interesting landscapes. There are cliffs on the outer side of Madden Island, so you can try to get like the Milky Way coming out over the bluff or cliff. I highly suggest you bring a flashlight for light painting if you're going to do that, because that makes for much more interesting pictures. Also, uh, on the if I'm shooting over cliffs, I actually prefer a quarter moon because that gives like um, uh, enough light to just light up the foreground, but it doesn't overpower the stars. But there's very very specific conditions for that to actually work. But definitely Big Bay State Park, there's a lot to do here, like canoeing, wildlife, swimming and stuff. Um, I would definitely recommend uh, the outer side of Madeline Island for astrophotography. It is the other favorite place of mine to do this uh, astrophotography activity. So moving on, this is actually Bayfield as well. There is a uh, small spot between Bayfield and Ashland, about halfway. There's kind of like a pull-out beach area, and it's... In terms of light pollution, it's not like, I think it's probably a green or a blue area, probably like a more of a green area, but it's definitely right next to Lake Superior. And as you can see, you can see the galaxy pretty well. This is with my 24 millimeter, so it's not like as sharp as my 14, but you can clearly see the galaxy here coming out. Uh, there is a bit of light pollution, as you can see over there in the distance, um, because that's Bayfield. Um, but it's a pretty good place, and it's very accessible. If you can't get on the islands, or you can't get into the really, really dark spots uh, around Bayfield, like Cornucopia, which is really impossible to find a place to park, basically, uh, around there. Um, this is actually a suitable substitute. You can see the galaxy clearly coming out from under the 
um, coming out from behind the trees and you can see all the stardust so this is a, a really good area for astrophotography this is between Bayfield and Ashland and it is kind of like a little park where you can just shoot the stars at night and also it swim during the day um, let's moving further west you have Copper Falls State Park this is a blue area but Copper Falls actually has a lot of nice scenery in terms of like waterfalls this is a close-up of I think Brownstone Falls um, and this is a time-lapse but during the night if you're really good, you can angle the camera to get like stars above the trees with waterfall below, especially if you have a, a flashlight to light paint the foreground, which is definitely, I, I actually um, recommend you get a very, very uh, concentrated beam of light, like a type of flashlight that has a very, very concentrated beam to shine on the falls to paint the foreground, because you are actually pretty far away from the falls on the uh, balcony overlooking the falls. If you, try, if you want to try to get that. Otherwise, you can just shoot over the river. Um, the bad river flows through the entire park. Any of the ponds or just any of the campsites and uh, wilderness areas. There's plenty of wildlife like deer here as well if you want to try to shoot that. But definitely Copper Falls State Park. It is a nice place to camp. And at night, it's a nice place to view the stars and shoot astrophotography. Moving on from Copper Falls, uh, my two favorite places because you don't have to have a ferry to access them and they're actually uh, quite good for shooting astrophotography. This is Sh uh, Shakomega National Forest. Shakomega National Forest is actually like um, a, a pretty big area. It is you know, a couple million acres, I believe. And uh, it's just a lot of it, there's two sections of it. There's the eastern half of it and the western half of it. The eastern half of it's not as good as the western half. I think a lot of the resorts and stuff are the eastern half, so it has significantly more light pollution than the western half. And you want to get into the really dark spots, even in the western half. And um, those are kind of few, and those are like, it's a, there's a big area where it's just completely black, but it's hard to find any kind of parking, and you really can't, there aren't really any that many roadside pullouts for you to pull out at. So um, it might be a little hard for you to actually find uh, a place to actually shoot astrophotography. This particular shot was shot at uh, Lake Namakegan. Uh, this is at this is actually I think on uh, State Road 63 where it actually splits the two halves of the lake. And then I just pulled over to kind of like a boat launch uh, parking area and I just shot from the dock. This is probably 2, 3 a.m. so there was no one else there. And uh, since there was no one else there, it makes for perfect photography. Um, it, this is a star trails. As you can see, this is shot from my 24. And uh, because it stopped down to like, I think, F of 7, it, it's actually really sharp. You can see the lines are pretty sharp. Even like you can see the background across the lake. It's fairly sharp. Well, as sharp as it can be when it's like pitch black outside. And um, generally, this is a good place to shoot because, you know, it's, there's plenty of parking. You can set up near the dock. There is some natural, well, not natural. There are like some lamps far in the distance you can use to light up the foreground if you don't have your flashlight. I didn't have a flashlight this time. But as you can see, I think there was like a lamp somewhere in the foreground that lights up part of the lake. And there's some lights across the lake if you need to manually focus your lens. Uh, lake Namakegan isn't the darkest spot in the National Forest, but it's a deep, dark blue spot. So it's easily well enough to see the galaxy and do a lot of like astrophotography. Um, you can see actually in this time lapse, uh, it's a 30 minute exposure, you can definitely see like the Milky Way is here. I just kind of like uh, shot a star trails so everything's kind of blurry because the stars are streaming across the sky. But you can just tell by the intensity of the star trails here that this is a pretty dark area. If you shoot uh, a 30 minute exposure for star trails uh, in an area with a lot of light pollution, you won't get this kind of streaks, these kind of hard streaks across the sky. So definitely uh, Shekomega National Forest, I think that's how you pronounce that. But if you even want a better place in the forest, I would look at the um, Clam Lake Lodge and also the, uh, the Day Lake um, Campground. The campground you'll have to obviously reserve a campsite to actually explore that area at night and shoot uh, astrophotography around the lake area. And the lodge I don't know if you actually have to stay at the lodge. You might have to because it's like private uh, property. But if you can find like a good like uh, car pullout area um, along Day Lake or uh, Clam Lake, 
definitely take that as well. Also, uh, uh, along that area, there's small little fishing lakes where you can just kind of like pull up, and sometimes there's a dock near the lake, and you want you you can actually shoot in those areas um, in terms of uh, astrophotography, and those will be completely dark. There'll be no one there. Um, you might get some random wildlife, which is troublesome. I've never had trouble with trial, uh, wildlife when I'm shooting astro. They, they tend to avoid humans, but just look out for that. But Sh uh, Shekumega National Forest, um, all across the central area of the western part of the forest, is completely dark. And um, Lake Namakegan, uh, Day Lake, and uh, Clam Lake are the three that you should look for, probably, um, to, for shooting astrophotography. Actually, anything in that central area is fine. There's a lot of state wilderness and natural areas there. But definitely check out National uh, Shamanekwan National Forest. It is one of my favorite places to go to shoot astrophotography. It is about five hours northwest of Madison, so it's quite a drive. And uh, you will have to take at least you know, two days there to shoot uh, good uh, star shots there. And next is probably my favorite place, and that's Flambeau River State Forest. This is shot with my 24mm uh, f of um, uh, 1.4. Um, you can see it's, it's not like the uh, sharpest. If you take a really close look, there's, and you can definitely tell uh, because the uh, lights and the stuff on the other side. If this was my 1.4, this would be much sharper. Um, but also, this is probably my favorite place because there are definitely like three spots I know you can shoot really good astrophotography uh, at this place. This is shot at Connors Lake. Um, this is more of like the pre-dawn hours, but this was early in the year, probably like early May. This is probably shot at 3 a.m., maybe 2. Uh, as you can see, the galaxy is very, very visible from here. And uh, if I had a wider angle like my 14, it'd be sharper. And also, I could get a more width and breadth of the sky, which is what I really wish I had here. But I didn't have that lens at this time. But Connors Lake, um, you can just park there basically at night. And I don't know if you're supposed to be there, but there past 11, but no one really cares that much. Um, it is a it is generally a day use area, but I went there and just set up on the lawn, uh, set up on the grass. And shot over the lake at the kind of like camp cabins and definitely the Milky Way above them. And this is definitely one of the best areas to shoot uh, astrophotography uh, where there's uh, plentiful parking. Uh, there are, is wildlife around here, but I really didn't see anything. I did hear the wolves howl, but that doesn't really scare me. So that's perfectly fine. Um, this is definitely one of my favorite areas to shoot. Flambeau River State Forest. It is slightly closer than Shamanakwan. It's actually directly south of uh, Shamanakwan National Forest. It's about four, four and a half hours away from Madison, and it is a black area. So definitely check this place out. The other two places you can shoot in Flambeau River State Forest are uh, Lake of the Pines, and uh, there's a boat launch area there where you can just like park at night because no one will want to go boating at night generally. It's a smaller lake. You can shoot towards, um, you're kind of, the boat launch is sort of at one end of the lake, you can shoot towards the other end, or you can shoot directly across the trees, and you'll get really good astrophotography, but Connors Lake might be better, because I know the galaxy appears right over it. I'm not sure about Lake of the Pines, it, the galaxy might appear over the other side, but even if it does, there'll be a, a lot of stars over uh, the pine trees at Lake of the Pines. The other place, which might actually be the best place, is the North Fork of the Flambeau River. It's probably a mile or two um, more on the highway, and there's actually like a little um, hotel type of cabin there, resort there, uh, where they have some seats and stuff, and you can set up there to shoot over the uh, North Fork of the Flambeau River, and I think that would be really, really good um, uh, astrophotography. I actually have some really good sunrise shots there, and I think it would be beautiful at night too with the stars. You might actually have to... Uh, stay in the cabin for a night there though to actually shoot that I'm not sure I might actually do that sometime because I believe it's, it's it's probably worth it just to pay you know 50 bucks for a, a night of cabin stay and then just shoot around the Flambeau area the Flambeau area is is just beautiful for sunrise sunset and just natural uh, shooting it's, it's one of my favorite places in the state I don't go there very much because it's very very it's four and a half hours away and I would have to take a weekend to shoot there but if I had to shoot anywhere in Wisconsin for a weekend, outside of the fact, if I couldn't get on the islands, I would probably shoot at Flambeau River State Forest because it's a beautiful area and it's my favorite, personal favorite for astrophotography. All right, I think that covers 
uh, all the areas I wanted to talk about. Um, and this is a pretty comprehensive review of the best astrophotography areas in southern Wisconsin. Uh, I will uh, put a link to the article with all the uh, areas and some example shots. I'll link to the album if I have an album, but if I don't have a separate album for some of these areas, like if they're just in southern Wisconsin or something, and they're just in that album, I'll put a link to the picture. All right. Thank you. If you like this video, subscribe. If you found it helpful, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And um, I'm out for today. All right. Have a nice day.